Welcome to worship this great Sunday morning here at St. John Lutheran Church. We're happy that you are able to join us. A couple of quick announcements before we begin worship. Um, we have an uh, adult forum today with Dr. Eric Rothger. He's going to be looking at Zoroastrianism. It's probably one of those religions that you've maybe heard about, maybe you didn't realize it still exists, and you probably don't realize how much it's influenced Judaism and Christianity. So if you're able to join us, that'll be on Zoom at 10.30. The link is on our Facebook page and on our website as well. In a few weeks, we are doing Christmas here at St. John. We're not able to be inside the building. We're doing it outdoors, but we've also got our um, Sunday School Christmas program coming up, and we're asking our um, youth, our children, to do that at home and to send in videos. We talked about having the videos due this Sunday, 
But with the weather being so nice, we think maybe people might not have gotten around to it, and so we're giving people another week or, uh, um, to get those videos in. So there's instructions that are sent out. If you need those sent out again, let us know at the office at St. John Fargo. And then for everyone, um, we are looking for photos of your Christmas decorations. So those, if you can send those in to office at St. John Fargo, that would be wonderful. We're, we're one, we want to celebrate Christmas together as much as we're able, and this is one of the ways we're going to do that. So... So there are plenty of other announcements if you um, can find those on the, on the Facebook or on the um, website. We also put those up before worship begins if you want to tune in early. You can, you can see our announcements. With that, we turn to confession and forgiveness, which is found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And let us pray. As we await the fullness of Christ's coming, let us acknowledge our sins and failures before God. Lord, in a season when we are told we should be joyful, many of us are struggling with the heaviness of life, burdens that steal the joy out of our lives. We need your peace. Forgive us when we care more about the gifts under the tree than the gifts of others and creation for which we have been invited to care. And we now take a moment for silent meditation and reflection. And we receive our absolution. This Advent, we need God's joy and peace. In our brokenness, God comes to provide rest for the weary peace for the anxious, and healing to the brokenhearted. May we all know that peace, and may we know that God gives us this day the precious gift of forgiveness of sins and grace-sustaining love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing the first two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 257 in our red hymnal. Today we light both the prophecy and the Bethlehem candles. The prophecy candle symbolizes the time of waiting. Prophets like Isaiah and Micah foretold the birth of Christ. The Bethlehem candle symbolizes faith, faith that the Messiah, Messiah was coming. The Bethlehem candle reminds us of the waiting that Mary and Joseph did as they prepared for the arrival of Jesus. We also hear about the prophet John who came before Jesus and shouted, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We are to get ready. We hear in scripture, But you, O Bethlehem, though you are small, 
out of you will come one who will be ruled over Israel. Let us pray. O oh God, let the light of the Bethlehem candle shine over all people, showing us that you are the place where the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Amen. 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 And we now sing together verses 1 and 4 of hymn number 244, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you through these difficult times, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we now hear our readings. The first lesson for today is found in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. <clears throat> the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. 
See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The second reading is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Here end the readings. Please sing along with the gospel acclamation. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would imagine that many of us will be making difficult phone calls or emails in this next few weeks where we tell friends and family that unfortunately we cannot gather with them. It's probably going to be a difficult Christmas, but we're living in a very difficult time. It almost feels like we're being punished for something that we haven't done. 
even though we haven't done anything wrong to deserve this, we feel like we're under some sort of un- unfair punishment. And most of us, if not almost, I would guess all of us, are ready for the pandemic life to end. And so when we hear that there is a vaccine coming, this is amazing news, but it is not here yet. And so when we read these words from Isaiah 40, we have to remember a few things. First of all, Isaiah 40 is written to people in exile. These are people who are living in Babylon. Present-day Iran, Iraq, who have been separated from their friends and family in Israel and Judah, who have been sent there and don't know when or if they'll be able to come back. Some Israelites actually ended up in Babylon for more than a couple hundred years. So they had families. They had put down roots. And I think we can probably relate to these people in exile, even though we've only been living in this pandemic mode for eight, nine months. Because we long for good news. We long for a time when we are not living like this. We desperately desire to be able to just go out to lunch with our friends and not worry about what might happen if we do. Not worry if we've done the right thing. We would love to be able to gather with our parents, our grandparents, for Christmas. For me, this will be the first time in 49 years that I am not celebrating Christmas with my parents. And so it feels a little bit like we are living in the wilderness, in a place where there is no comfort, there is no law, there, is no something, there isn't something we can count on, something we can rely upon. And yet, notice how Isaiah begins this text. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. This is not about holding them accountable. This is not about punishment. This is not about suffering. This is about a God who loves God's people. A God who wants to, as, as we read in Isaiah, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. This is a God who loves us, who loves you, who is coming to us in the wilderness and is proclaiming this good news to us. It's really amazing, too, when we think about these people who are living in exile. God still claims them. If you read in verse 9 and 10, we read about this God who says to the messenger, get you up to a high mountain, and then further along, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. And so for us, too, For many of us who haven't been inside the church building for months, for many of us who haven't been able to worship as we would like, who are looking at a Christmas outside our sanctuary, we need to hear these words, here is your God. You are still God's people. You have not been estranged. You have not been forgotten. You are not neglected, but instead you have a God who comes to you. In the exile... You think about the distance between Israel and Iraq and Iran. Think about that God who's coming across the desert, who's coming to them in exile in the wilderness to meet them, to greet them, to save them, to bring them to salvation. Because that same God is our God as well. Your God is coming to you. Your God is with you now. There are miracles happening. This is probably the hardest part of our modern life is that we are so used to everything making sense. Everything has to fit into this neat, tidy order. If I do this, then I get that. And if I don't do that, then this happens. But yet we have a God who is saying to us, you are not alone. You are my chosen, you are my beloved, and I am with you, even though you may feel like you are lost. Incarnation is about to happen, says our God. God is coming to us. God is with us. And we can claim that we are with God. Because you are being invited to get on these mountaintops and to proclaim this good news, to let people know that we have not been forsaken, that our God is with us. And certainly, 
we may feel like we are still in exile, still in the wilderness, but God has not forgotten us. This is what the Gospel of Mark is trying to let us know. That the good news of Jesus Christ is coming. That it's been foretold by the prophet Isaiah that we have John the Baptist out doing crazy things in the wilderness and yet it's making a difference. As the gospel section ends, I have baptized you with water, says John, but Christ will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We have been baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. We have been claimed by our God and we will never be forsaken. And so, in the in-between times, in these difficult moments, in these times when we're thinking about holidays alone, whether through pandemic or through loss or through whatever, we have to be able to still claim that we have a God with us. And that claim starts with God. A God who claims you, a God who promises to you that you are not alone. And so we are God's messengers so that all may know God's grace and God's salvation. And then, I love the way that this verse, this section from Isaiah 40 ends. See, it says in verse 10, The Lord God comes with might, right? And his arm rules for him and his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And then, in verse 11, we see what this salvation looks like. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is not a God of wanton destruction. This is a God of life, a God of grace, a God of love, a God who desires community, a God who desires us to be surrounded by a life, a daily life full of grace and love. Because this Verse 11 is about daily life. And so tomorrow when you wake up, I hope that you can remember that even though life is different, that you're in an exodus or an exile or a wilderness, that God is with you, that God is coming. I hope that you can remember on Tuesday and Wednesday as well that same thing, that even though life is not perfect, life is difficult, it's really hard. We have a God who loves us who is coming for us. Because I think when we get to Christmas and we celebrate the incarnation, the birth of Christ, it will mean so much more. Because we've been without all of that community for so long. We so earnestly desire to gather together and yet we have a God who says, wait, I will come to you. I will gather you together when it is time. I will bring you grace and love. I will comfort you throughout your days. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we sing verses 1 and 3 of hymn number 256, Comfort, Comfort Now, My People.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for those of our community who need you for strength during these times of trial, whether that be illness or needs known only to you. We pray especially for Paul Mellon, Marianne Wallen, Renee Rudolph, Dwayne Olson, Eric Ronson, Butch Popst, Ron Lee, Eddie Rotz, Carl Rodland, Jerry Ekstrom, Tracy Miller, Harley Ham and Betty Showstrom, Cliff Young, Janelle Hetzler, Kim and Jane Anderson, and Linda Lau. We pray for Monty and Amanda Knapp as they grieve the death of Monty's father. We also pray for Roger Roseth and his family as they grieve the death of his brother. And we pray for those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear then the words from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. This year in particular, those words seem to mean more. With social distancing and digital gatherings, we truly have not been able to gather and comfort one another as we should. For those in deep need of connection, we pray for peace and comfort for you. For those who can comfort, we pray that you intentionally reach out however you can to comfort others. Lord, in your mercy. We are deep into Advent, a time of waiting, of expectation, a time of the retelling of the greatest story. We have lived it year after year, but this year we experience it differently. We long to share it communally as we and others have done for centuries. It won't come as a thief in the night, but I tell you that we will once again meet as a community. Imagine walking across our parking lot side by side with a friend whom we've not seen for months. Imagine entering through our doors and being welcomed by the sights, the sounds, the ambiance of what was once a weekly experience. Imagine hearing the strains of an organ decades old, but hearing it as if for the first time. Imagine the cacophony and din as we excitedly speak with one another on the renewal of an in-person worship. That time is not written on paper, nor a web page anywhere, and we know not the day, but it is written in our hearts, and soon that day of rejoicing together will be here. Say the chorus, good people of St. John, we can do this. Lord, in your mercy. And we now share our peace with one another. If you are gathered together with family at home, um, I encourage you to share that peace with one another. If you're by yourselves, I encourage you, I hope you receive this peace I now send you. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And we share that peace with one another. And we also gather our elements for communion at this time. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we now join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And if you are home worshiping uh, with other people, I encourage you to distribute the bread and wine to each other using the words, body of Christ given for you and blood of Christ shed for you. If you are home alone, I encourage you to receive the bread now, body of Christ given for you, and then um, say those words back for me, body of Christ given for you. And blood of Christ shed for you. And then back for me, blood of Christ shed for you. And we now receive our post-communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And then we say our prayer. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are the Lord forevermore. Amen. And we receive our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we sing verses 1 and 2 of our sending hymn, number 249, on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry. Go in peace, serve the Lord.